No, she's got um, she's got um, one set of minutes that is just illegible. Got it. Okay. Um, I, I, so I, I thought when I said I saw I saw, I saw like two minutes. You should open the paragraph on that. Should be clear you know, due to mechanical difficulties. You know, there's, it's not legible. This is the best I can do. Right. <laughs> All right, so what else can we do? I can do updates if you want. Yeah. Well, actually, we got we got, we do we have this uh, blonde just uh, five five times. Yeah. Right? Oh, no release. No, no it's just no. extension. Oh, okay. Extension. How big is the bond? Let me see here. Is it saying? Should say. I'm not going to touch that one. Uh, Let's see. Mm -hmm. The these act is essentially a performance guarantee is that yeah right? and so the bank will put it into place for a certain number of months and so we have to keep on top of them to make sure they keep extending it otherwise we will end up right, right. so i think that is that one for eden circle right now it says sixty eight thousand eight hundred twenty and 13. all they need now is street acceptance and a few repairs before they get to street acceptance so there should be very late yeah, this is. Um, Do we walk on street acceptance, um, or is it all just department? You know, like the DBW. Board, the, board, the select board approves the does a street. But, did, but oh, aside from approving, but do they are they physically is someone on the select board physically walk to do that inspection with the other no, board. No, no, no. So I haven't inspected. Um, GM2 inspects it and gives us a report um, because they've been you know, doing the, the construction inspection throughout. Um, and also the town engineer sees it. Okay. So this so, is just three copies of the same one, right? Yeah. Okay. So um, do we want, do we need to make a motion to sign? I think you just signed it. Um, yeah. We didn't put that in the motions. I, yeah, I think we just sign it. Yeah, I don't think you have to approve right. the extension because they, they have to extend it. Well, there's only two of us here to sign it. Sure. Um, she can have your client pop in. Or actually, yeah. it can be any of the members. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't have to be someone who attends right. tonight. But, but you know, we get a report from them. We have a hearing. The select board has a hearing. They give us two sets of plans. One is street acceptance plan. One is an as-built plan. GM2 will also review the as-built. So when I was I was reading everything wrote in, in the McIntyre thing, um, and I started thinking about that for a while about, because I remember clearly that I, I the qu questioned the guy and they went back and they redid, but whether they redid the draining scouts because of what that, that or something else, I don't really remember it. But I know they redid the drainage scouts. There are two back, versions of it. On that entire, right? Yeah, there are two. So, so yeah. whether so, but it occurred to me. Okay, you'll appreciate this <laughs> from a practical point of view. To say that the septic systems add water to the system and have them put in roof drains to compensate for it. That makes no sense. That makes because sense. because the septic system is actually doing the exact same thing. Right. Right. So what you're compensating for something that doesn't need to be compensated for. I agree. Because basically a septic system cleans the water, puts it back in the aquifer, yeah. and the, the roof drain takes clean water and puts it in the aquifer. <laughs> so so I mean when the more I thought about it, yeah. that, well wait a minute. Let's get a wet roof or something. <laughs> well no, I'm just, no, you know, just I know the you know the practicality has yeah. slipped away, you know. So the more I thought about it. Sometimes for like for those lots where it's right. Like there is definitely a, a flow of problem onto a neighbor, like to help to mitigate that. Like on Shailene, that one house that became right. kind of problematic, they had a huge roof and they didn't have any retrains connected. So there was more flow going off the site than right, right. needed to be. But you're right, from a compilation, it doesn't. Yeah, it's, do yeah, it doesn't really matter because it's being recharged. It's not a surface flow, it's not a catchment area. Right. However, having said that, if it was a place like, uh, well, like you were just talking about, Dave, where the groundwater is only a foot down, and even though they build a system way up, they could locally add to the height of that groundwater if they put a lot into that system. But yeah. it would be very local. It would not be something that would necessarily affect the neighbor, but it would be local because essentially, you know, the ground is huge. It's not. Well, yeah, Dave. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so um, 
I know that that was a consideration in that McIntyre, the drainage count, the drainage count was a book about an inch thick. Debbie scanned it. Yeah, she scanned it and sent it to him. Yeah. Yeah. I think, did she do both versions? She definitely did the the, the approved version. Yeah, you see, the second version was after we had that discussion. But so, he, he said that it didn't take it into account. So. Well, whether they wrote down that it took into account or whether they just said, okay, these are the flows, these flows are going to be cut contributory, but why else change it? Because what they did is they, and, but that was what me thinking. Because what they did is they went and put roof drains on all the, on three of those houses outside yeah. there. I mean, we don't really get second drainage report because there are usually corrections that need to be made to the population. But yeah, maybe that was one of the yeah. things. There might have just been a contributing factor, but, but it did happen after we had that one. Because I, I spent, I spent about three hours with that, with reading that whole thing to Steve because the water was going to be such a problem on that end of McIntyre. So, um, um, and when I asked him questions, he did not have good answers. And then he said, well, we're going to have to redo this and so forth and so on. But that was one of the things I brought up. <clears throat> so, but I never followed up to see if he put it in the... Is McIntyre a subdivision that... That's a lot of water flowing onto the greens, right? And then yeah, well, well, we had a, we had a yeah. huge storm that, that was just being built, mm -hmm. and all the catch basins were raised up, and so the water didn't go in them, and it yeah. came down, and the river came up and flooded that whole street. And what a one elm street had four feet of water in the garage. He's like, continue. <laughs> well, we I, don't have enough members to. To I'll not use one, so we are not going to have an extra official in the telephone. Let's swear him in. Yeah. Sure. Jeez, I was going to use my rock salt analogy again. Yeah. Is that good? I like it. You picked up one. You knew exactly what I was talking about. Yeah. Okay. See you in one. Thank right, you. Thanks. Um, oh, Jeremiah is back in. It took me a few minutes, but I had emails. On a bunch of them that when they were signed in the fee. So I was trying to send out an email to as many of them as I could. Some of them bounced back, but they were not readable. Yeah. And I also called Joey Reynolds. Okay. And I put the notes on Yeah, we'll, we'll probably still get a few. So yeah, we can tell them. And so the way we have to wait until eight, right? To, to do, continue to do the, yeah. yeah I just, and then the other sure. one, I think it's 815. We have to wait. Yeah. The other one's eight. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, we well, actually, this one says 8.30, right? Oh, no, that's to continue yeah. two. Sorry. Next time we'll bring a crib board, you know. Yeah. Oh, so, <laughs> yeah. yeah, someone will have to come. Bring a frisbee or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Go long. Should I date it today? Yeah. I'm yeah a couple of 10 inch ones on the parking lot or something, you know. Wake up the neighbors. <laughs> that sound. <laughs> Do you want me to just do a small thing? Sure. Out of the way. Oh, wait. Oh. Okay. Sorry. Jeremiah, can you hear? Yes. Oh, great. <laughs> Doing updates. <laughs> just trying to keep everybody from hearing the gurgling baby. Yes. <laughs> it's only us, so we love babies. We're good. <laughs> So, She'll be memorialized on North Camp yeah. forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Debbie puts in the gurgling noise in the minutes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Right on cue. Yep. It's on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so just a few updates. Um, the school committee meeting on August 29th is actually going to be in person and not only virtual. Scott Buckley got in touch to say um, that they are planning on having that one in person, though he had thought that it was going to be virtual, but for that night, it's going to be in person. We're more than welcome to participate virtually if that is the preference. Meet meeting. Um, they, I think they meet in the distance. Do they still meet the distance or not? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I'll find out because I have a list of the agenda. Maybe yet. sometimes they're in the cafeteria. Um, <laughs> I'll find out the location yeah. and I'll let everyone know. Um, 
So I realize we may have had a couple members who were planning on calling in for that, which is fine. They said we can definitely do that, but um, that they wanted to let us know would be interesting. Um, I'll prepare a presentation for that um, just to explain the whole right. FTA community's, you know, what we're doing and why. Um, we did talk about um, scheduling some public meetings to discuss the MBTA community's issue after following that school committee meeting. What did the, uh, I know, uh, are we just letting the school committee know about this or, or, or are we looking for very specific input from them? Well, I think you guys were reasoning that letting them know about it first and seeing if they would or were in agreement with this approach. Well, because I think that the only, I think uh, that the questions that they, I mean, I, if you want to be prepared, I think the questions they're going to ask is, is uh, well, first of all, because the site we're going to use already exists, we don't have to try to project what it's going to do to school enrollment. Right. So I think that's going to be the question. I guess, so how is that going to affect our school enrollment? And we're going to say, well, you already got the kids that, you know, we, we're using an existing thing, so you've already got those kids. If, you, if they go into school now, you got them, and so you're really not going to have any real. So there's no future in it, though, for them to protect. You know, well, that's, what, that's basically, I think, what what I'm getting at. Okay. Two things that it's important to be to other people that because this is an already developed site, the likelihood is lower that right. it would be redeveloped. But that's if you're changing something on it, then there's always a possibility that that owners could say, yeah, we do want to redevelop it. And, and if it does get redeveloped, it has to be in accordance with, um, or at least have the option of, kids can't be restricted from that site yep. ever again. Right, right. So unless it's not the choice of the person who wants to develop it. So we do well, have to keep in mind that that is a possibility. It, it may be a very unlikely possibility. Well, we kind of, we kind of did a, a roundabout approach to restricting it by making it all as many same one bedroom and two bedrooms as you could. They try to limit, you know, how many kids, you know. Well, that's Edgewood. I think for Martin's Ed, Landing, yeah. they wanted to do one and two because it's targeted to seniors. So right. for that's what I'm saying. So the, yeah. the very the very way that it was approved limits the number of kids. Right, that does. But if it were to be a redevelopment, which I don't think is likely, but it could happen. I mean, they could go and start combining units and make the one, two units into one unit, and then have a four bedroom home. They could, but they're not. Yeah, they're as far as all the ones we're doing right now, in the way the pro formers work out, you don't want to do more than two bedrooms. Well, that's what I was going to say. Is I don't know that that these days, that these days that people are having so many kids. I mean, I, I came up with a family of nine kids. I don't see many nine kid families in the neighborhood. And I grew up in North Reagan in a family of nine kids. So there's, there's uh, that's, you know, a lot. And, and um, seven. You just don't see it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but who do you know? Three to a room. <laughs> who, do you, yeah, who do you know? One bathroom, have, too. Who do you know if your kids or my, my kids or any of those kids that have more than a, just two kids? Yeah, it's, it's, it's less. I mean, because it's so expensive, to be honest, right? I mean, that's what it is. I don't think our parents could have as many nowadays, or any parent could. I don't know how people do. Yeah. Right? To other parents here, isn't it like crazy expensive? Oh, gosh. Yeah. So I guess I just want to make sure, like, you guys had suggested that we meet with the school committee. So I just want to make sure you can... You still think that's a good idea? Well, I'm, what I was trying to do is flesh out some what, what the questions might be. Yeah, like so that so that it's productive and that, like you said, if, if it was one of these things where we're going into this new area and we need you guys to figure out how many. Yeah, like what do you want to know? Like that's roll up your <laughs> sleeves time, but like here it's more like this is it's more just to let them know and assure them that there are some existing conditions in place that. Or situation that like there shouldn't be big differences. Right. Just they're not, they get their they're not going to get 40, 45 or fifty yeah. new kids next year. I mean, they right. might they right. might not completely agree, but I mean, that's that's why they're the school. Based on what it is that we're doing, just in the 
sense that, you know, they're voters and they're an important committee in right. general. And, you know, we need to make sure they understand what the approach is and why. Um, and I will also mention that, you know, this is a town meeting decision. And if it didn't pass a town meeting, then we would have to come up with something else. And then we might have to figure out looking at other areas. But this is the most conservative possible approach we can take right now. So I, I don't anticipate that it would be a controversial meeting. I just think yeah, that you yeah. had wanted to get the school committee yeah. on board with the approach first yeah. before we started to talk to them. Yeah, I just wanted to be, I just wanted to know that, you know, I, rather than everybody sitting there looking at each other, I wanted to kind of direct the conversation, you know, get an idea of where we're going with it, you know. Do we, do we have diagrams, you know, just show them this is these are the areas that would be impacted. I mean, are we showing them anything? Yeah. Like, Okay. Like I was going to do about yeah. point to just say this is the history of you know why we are looking at this at all. This, yeah. These are the requirements. This is the area we're targeting. The, the quarter. And the, yeah. yeah, that'd be yeah. the procedure. Just explain why we chose this approach, and that, and also that we'll be discussing it more with the community because we don't want to show up to you know. Well, we're, just, we're really very lucky. We have this unit already all built it that we could that and that they'll accept it. I don't want to use that's 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 a clean win. Right. We, we do have to. We do have to change. Going on it. And, you know, if the people who live on those properties don't like the idea of that, then we may have to come up with another approach, but we'll, we have to just... Um, I don't know that the people, but then it's mostly rentals over there, so... Yeah. The other half are owners, right? Yeah. Because Edgewood is rental. Yeah, right, right, right. That's, that's what I meant. Uh, yeah. I was more concerned about Edgewood. I don't know that the people, um, that they would care. I mean, you know. um, if if I could, uh, I I think it's important to build into this the idea that you know this is something that's happening. Our options are limited in terms of pushback, right. Right. and it seems like our idea from the very beginning was going to the school committee and saying, "Hey, you guys are on the ones touching the nerve of the town, and if this becomes a school issue, then." you know, it could, the whole thing could fall apart. Um, you know, but I think it's important to kind of stress when we have this, this meeting with them, that this is the way the state's going and our options, if we say no, are limited. So it's, uh, open ears to suggestions, but you know, there's a certain kind of like reality that everybody has to face. I would assume. Well, we want their support. You know, hopefully we, we, we're working to get their support in it. So if they, if we go to town meeting with this and the school department gets up and says, we support this, that would go a long way. I get, yeah, uh, no, no, that's a thing that makes total sense to me. To me, I just think that like part of our messaging should be also how, you know, how it, it almost feels like a frustrating thing that we have to be the ones to kind of say to the town, like, look, this is what the state's telling us. This is what we have to do. There's limited ways we can push back. We found a great convenient kind of way to do it that minimizes what we perceive to be the town's apprehensions of what could otherwise be the state's interpretation of all this. Um, but just, I mean, there, there does need to be, I think, a degree of matter of fact of, Hey, this is what we have to do. So unless you guys have something tangible to give us back in terms of alternatives, please don't just, you know, stonewall it because you're going to push us into a corner that's going to waste town resources trying to fight with the state. I think those are really good points and, and, and well put. And I, I will definitely work that into the presentation, just the idea that this is you know, legislation that's been passed and our ability to opt out is, you know, doesn't, we don't have any, you know, we're doing it. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. um, Okay. Well, also, too, I mean, I just just to be on the record with this, I mean, there was some talk in previous, you know, discussion on this topic about why why this shouldn't apply to our town. I can tell you guys from my family experience that we moved from North Andover to North Reading specifically for the proximity to the Reading MBTA station. So we are an MBTA community. It's a reality. There's a lot of community, there's a lot of people and families in our community where it doesn't apply to them, but there's a lot that it does. And I just, I don't want us to be a community that's part of the problem. Let's be part of the solution. And we need to make sure that we bring other people to the table on that. 
but I think Jeremiah raises a good because we've seen kind of Jeff here um, trying to peel back the, the layers to understand the genesis of it. So I think it'd be good because we've been trying to do that. And I'm not sure if we ever got an answer of like when this happened, 1970, or did you? That's true. It was an omission in the last oh, meeting. Perfect. And I, I knew that because Jeff had raised those questions, I emailed him just to say, I put this in there. I'll there you go. Under updates. I didn't have a like presentation about it, but I wrote up a whole history of like, yeah, that, yeah. that's, I get yeah. I gotta read that and I apologize send mm -hmm. it to me but um I think that's important that we go over that with them because just say like if you recall at the last town meeting there was a few people that got off and says like why are we still doing this I mean there's definite genuine like why are we doing this we why we pay we pay all that, yeah, all that kind of stuff thousands of dollars and that's, dollars and that's all germane but I just think it is important like just say this is how it happened. We were one, we had service, we voted for whatever the, I'll read it, and I apologize that it happened, but yeah. that'll be good to go over with them to, to Jeremiah's point that we are a community and we, this is coming, you know, so that covers kind of all the bases, you know, yeah. so it covers the beginning, the middle and the end. Yeah. And we, and we're basically, I mean, we, 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 we could not comply. However, the, the, the damage to us would be great because they, we would maybe take away some of our funding for grants and things like that. So it's not like we couldn't say no, but the but the cost of saying no is high. Well, actually, we thought we could say no and the cost would just be grants, but actually the Attorney General's office put out a statement a few months ago saying All right. this is mandatory. Yeah, it said mandatory. Not, it's not, you know, it's not just funding. It's yeah, so the, the whole housing thing is, the whole housing thing. I printed that out. We could read that. Because <laughs> so, it sounds pretty definite. Jeremiah's an attorney, you know what I mean? But, this oh, is wait. what I'm trying to say. This is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. So that's we'll let Jeremiah read that one. <laughs> Wear the wig too when you go, all right? The whole barrel like, want the robe and everything. And baby. <laughs> with with a wig and a robe. <laughs> Getting a little far afield here. I don't know. <laughs> um public meeting, gotta have fun. <laughs> yeah, so I so um yeah, we just have to make them yeah, you know, if they realize that this has got to happen and we can get them to support us at the town meeting vote and then just because we don't want to fight the yeah. right. So one of the things that they talk about doing following that school committee meeting was planning a couple of community meetings. Right. Um we had talked about September 12th and 26th as being possible dates to do that, just advertising it to the wider community to to give a presentation and to say this is what's going to be proposed at you know, June town meeting and why. Um, are those dates that we still think we should be aiming for? I can, I would like to make sure that the word gets out and people know about it. I think, yeah, you kind of have to. Yeah, I think it's so. over, right? So you got to plug those in, right? Well, so we're, I think we had decided that we're not going for the October time. Oh, meeting, okay. So we're not. doing the June. Got it. Um, okay. So that's early, but okay. Well, we have enough time though. We have what do we have until the end of next year or something. We like. do at the end. Okay, of sorry. So yeah, so so uh, yeah, so we so I don't. It's a problem. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be that contentious. I think is once people understand that you know, first of all, <laughs> we have to do it <laughs> because we get no choice. I don't think it will be contentious either, but I think we have to explain it to people before town meeting. Yeah. <laughs> so we really just got to make sure people understand it and then don't just show up to town meeting and say, what is this? Well, it, well town meeting, you know, it, it, the most important thing you can do is to get the other boards to come and support it. If you have all the boards support this, that, that'd be good. Because there are a lot of people that come to town meeting that don't understand and that will, will never have had the opportunity to read this or know anything about it. And they're going to have to say, wait a minute, wait a minute, what are we doing here? Mm -hmm. you know, so so you, you might as well anticipate having to do a fairly detailed explanation yes. at town meeting. Yes. Uh, however, so the important thing, though, ahead of time, and this has been true of any of the any initiative that you put forth, you need to get all the town boards on the same page because, you know, because of the, you know, it's, it's, one of the other boards gets up and says, well, I don't know, you know, that's, 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 that's right. So as long as everybody understands it, we get everybody on board, it'll go smoothly. Do we still want to target those two dates? No, why not? Okay, yeah, might as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll get something in the paper, get some, we'll just work it out. It's like everything else. The more people that are knowledgeable about it, the easier it's going to be to work just with. Get the word out as much as we can. That's um, always been the case. Uh, 
but yeah, but you're not going to get you know you're going to get two or three hundred people at town meeting and you're not going to get that many people in this room. I think we should also um, maybe just send a memo to the select board and they know about it only because we've talked about it at their yeah. meetings before. But I think that it would be nice to give them a presentation and just to say sure. this is the approach we're looking at. Yeah, I think that would be. I think that's. A, I think it's actually a, a, a should be a requirement for us because. Because again, they they need to say and tell me, oh yeah, we know all about this and we support it. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, I don't do I do type in now and I'm sorry, but um, the transcript doesn't seem like it has a whole lot to write about lately in the paper. Okay. I'm wondering if maybe you could make a little story. Yeah, that's a good idea. You know, I know that Mike meets with Maureen weekly, so I can talk with him about getting her like you know press release and make that conversation just. So that she just don't give her more of a description of what it's, what it's all about. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, if, if I may, if I may, mm -hmm. um, I I think that you know, and as as an attorney, I almost think like you know, we should lean on the attorneys to tell the, the, the rest of the town and the boards and everybody, uh, especially if we could work with Maureen getting this kind of message out, is that this is a requirement. This isn't the, the CPC saying, let's do this. This isn't the select board saying, let's do this. This is a requirement that has been vetted by town council. He's confirming like, yeah, we, we just got to do it. I think that that should be the first step forward in any kind of communication we put out there of this is not like something that we can just say no to based on objective legal advice. Um, but here is all the ways the town is looking to kind of manage it and mitigate it. Cause the thing I would want to head off is, you know, I, 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 the, I think it was uh, Middleborough or Marlboro, one of the other towns that were challenged this where it just, the town is just kind of like, well, we're going to say no to it and let the consequences be damned. Um, I think it's, it's, it's best if we can get not necessarily the CPC being the one saying this is what we have to do, but the, the other board is circling around the town council saying this is what we have to do and everybody finding a solution to it. I think it takes the onus off of us of being the one of a, you know, we're going to vote against this because we just don't want to do it and kind of puts it on the others that you have to communicate this to your own constituency for us to avoid a problem here. But there's also, there's also the, the, um, the, the, there are people who are, and any activists that that are uh, interested in in the fact that this is all about housing for people who can't afford it, about getting affordable housing into the state. That's what it's all about. So we don't want to put ourselves as try to, you know, get, get out of having to do anything, you know. <laughs> um, no, I, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that. If if anything, it's the opposite to me. It's the lean. We should lean on the state. You know, we don't need to explain this other than we're part of Massachusetts. This is what the state's doing. It's a it's it is what it is. Um, yes. And and here's what we can do to try to build it into the fabric of our town planning. And we've already anticipated this. That's why we have a good solution to it all. So it's nothing anybody should panic about. But at the same time, let's not waste any time trying to fight the narrative. Let's not try to fight the realities. We live in an age right now where people want to pretend that the sky isn't blue and and let's avoid all that by just bringing in impartial people who say, hey, everybody in the town boards, you're all part of this decision making process. Uh, you know, we're the objective people telling you this is the reality. Mitigate the damages and that's the best you're going to do or or embrace the positives out of it. God forbid. God forbid. Okay. Good. No, I think that's a you know, good way to frame it. Um, okay, so I'll be working on the presentation um, for the 29th, which actually will be the next time that we are all meeting, um, because we don't have a meeting before then. Um, but I can drop the presentation into the share file before that, because I work on it. Um, I guess moving on to another update or more of a question. Um, Shane Lane and their street tree placement. It came to our attention recently that somehow when the Shane Lane subdivision plans were approved, um, we just didn't notice that the street trees are shown in the grass strip instead of behind the right of way, which they're supposed to be in our regulations. Um, 
Now, I, I called Dave Murray to discuss that with him. He said, I don't care where I put the trees. You just tell me where to put them. Um, I, I kind of think that that's something that can just be handled as a field change. I mean, it is in our regulations. It's just not in the approved plan. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to bring this up with you to be sure that you were in agreement, too. I don't remember any special reason why they would have been in so the there are any EPS plans to back from there, or what do no, you mean? they're in the tree line, so they, I mean, and they're in the sidewalk in the street, which we don't do anymore. We don't do anymore because they get they tear up the sidewalk, okay, so we good. put them in people's yards. Good. Yeah. So actually, um, Chris Deming called me because he was like, "So I was chatting with you know Dave Murray not long ago, and it sounds to me like he's planning on putting the street trees in the grass strip. Like, please tell me that's not true." Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh." That doesn't sound right. So I looked into it and I realized why he would think that. Well, Dave's you should drive down your way drive. If you have anything bigger than a small car, you're going to get your roof ripped off, right? <laughs> Those beautiful cherry trees. <laughs> they got to cut back. Yeah, that was true. Yeah, they're starting to really get out. Yeah, so out there. I don't know who plowed that road that I'm, but I see pieces of the truck every time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean, know, really, need to yeah. be, they need to be trimmed back. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And, and, I, and I know there's a couple of the couple of places where they actually have gone and done a lot of trimming on, you know, to get on mm -hmm. to, you know, to, to make them so you can drive down that way without, <laughs> I don't know, or walk on the sidewalks right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I even, even at my own house, I have to keep going up here and trim the trees back because they reach out over the sidewalk. Okay, so I'll let them know um, behind the right of way for the subdivision regulations. Okay. Yeah, okay. Great. And then my last um, thing I just wanted to confirm, um, our September 5th meeting is our next regular CPC meeting. I just wanted to make sure everyone had it on their radar and plan to be here because we will need to vote to either approve, deny, or extend the deadline for the Anthony Road subdivision um, because we currently, later that week, have that as our deadline. So we have to make sure we have a forum here that night. And then the other reason is um, we've advertised a uh, street acceptance hearing for Eaton Circle, which we only need three people for, but I just wanted to make sure we would at least have a forum right. that night. Okay. So. Uh, well, it being after eight o'clock, I suppose we could uh, do the 66 Winter Street. All right, you ready to do that? I do. Chairman, I move that the community planning commission vote to continue the public hearing for 66 Winter Street until September 5th, 2023 at 8 p.m. Seconded. Okay, thank you, Jeremiah. Okay, I'll do a roll call vote. Um, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, of Jeremiah? Aye. And myself, aye. And David? Aye. Board control three in favor, no opposed. Um, and that is extended. This one's eight fifteen. Yeah, okay. not too bad. We got we got eight with six, eight fives. <laughs> <clears throat> Oh, any any ZBA? <laughs> I didn't know it was perfect. Yeah. Uh, no ZBA. Mm -hmm. No ZBA this time. ZBA. Oh, ZBA. Yeah. Is, um, it, if in anything, it's you covered them on the last meeting, and I don't think they have another meeting until maybe is the Thursday. Mm -hmm. Do you have any? Uh, I, I thought they did. They not have that meeting already. I think. Minor? No, I thought it was maybe the 11th. Oh, Last after week. our 720. I didn't see any CBA. Yeah. No, 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 we don't have any for this time. Yeah, no, there's no this time, but I thought okay. I don't want to show the meeting like further ahead. Hmm. Oh, okay. But normally they just give them to us once a month because they only meet once a month. So we don't usually get them every meeting. We get them every other. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was all I had. Um, so when do you have to go? You have to go to the vineyard and leave. Maybe leave on tomorrow because. <laughs> If a long story, but we live in town, uh, we're going to the ferry, which by we used to do everything through the fire department. Fire department good. So, you got to take a barge, by the way, because it's so uh, expensive. Don't let you go underneath. No, so, 
I know when that was the the part that goes on the commercial boats. Which is the bar, should we call it? Oh, okay. Think of, yeah, the bar, that's the old bar. Yeah. Right, that, yeah, and it's old and so, you know, it's right. safer as far as that. Right. Yeah, person can get under the, the hole. <laughs> they used to do Black Island. Yeah. And they had, we had a China. <laughs> yeah. And I'd show up, and I'd show up along with that, and they put uh, two gasoline tankers on a propane truck and me. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> and I was, and, and the only people on the the only people were the drivers. Yeah. The only people on the boat were the drivers and the green the boat. Yeah. Um, and they, I used to tell them, you know, if everything goes bad, you guys will make it big, but I'll make it pretty. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I actually got to know the guy in the engine. I used to go out and hang out with the guy in the engine and play with motors. So I love people. That's funny. Uh, uh, I wouldn't go to the guy who go to the one with all the gear on to a go down there and hang out with him. Yeah, the vineyard is, well, that was Block Island, but the vineyard is the same thing. So fun. It's such a good. But that guy that was in the engine room was also a uh, reenactor, so he had a black powder license. So he had, he, 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 I ran into him at State Farm Marshal's office renewing his licenses, you know. So I get to know him pretty sure. There's like many years I did all the shows out there, but that could be a headache. Yeah, the travel, right? the, the logistics. No, no um, is it more of the whole, the whole way they, the whole way they do things out there? They don't, you know. They would take care if they would not, um, but have to go on the stage now and yeah. care what. I would think it would the logistics too would kind of dissuade you from. Well, no, it wasn't bad. I yeah. got to be a regular thing. Yeah. Point to it, get on the, you know, get on the thing. Take us over, take us back. Right. They'd be over there, we they drop us off, we go deliver all the product and all the stuff, and the, and the tank truck would go drop his fuel, and the propane tanks would go drop their propane, and then we'd all go back empty, get on, back and on. Worse, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, also the costs were, you know, this whole industry the costs are getting my insurance costs. Yeah, but imagine it's almost 25% of the whole thing now. Quarter out of every dollar I get is that uh, insurance. Yeah. Ridiculous. in general for everything. I can blame the like, well, you know, it's pretty hard to shoot out of the post coming up virus. Well, you know, the problem is only two main carriers in the whole world that will ensure the both and fire two more of them. Lloyd's of London, AIG. So you have AIG? Oh yeah, yeah. And we have all these different companies, this Everest and Thomas Ed and the other all these different companies, but when the audit comes in, AIG. <laughs> so, That's where it goes to. Yeah. <laughs> well, they must be making money. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think the problem is that there's so much natural disaster, there's so many things that they pan out that they just uh, arbitrarily yeah. uh, started raising the rates for everybody to try to recover. And they weren't making any money on investments. Right. But they probably are now, now that uh, interest rates are up. And right. Are, you know, they can make some money on their money, even though maybe, uh, maybe that, hopefully that might mitigate some of the insurance costs, but I think it's just going to be more and more every year. <laughs> well, maybe when we get to the point where they take half the money on the ground. <laughs> Yeah, when you're at 50 cents on the dollars, insurance, oh boy. That was getting help. We just have some folks join. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty crazy. So that's one of the reasons why I went competitive with under, I can tell you. When you do your insurance, you say how much money is you can make this year, how much money, you, how much business you're going to do. Because you pay for every, every single dollar, uh, every single dollar I is made. That 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 I don't care. That sounds like a family thing, but it don't look like money. No, it's actually have to be creative to try to dodge as much as you can. 
Because they get a lot of the I would say, I don't have to pay for the housing. I have to be able to reimbursement check the money I spent on their behalf. So that doesn't mean that's not income. Yeah. I don't have any income. So I have to be able to construction too. They're like that too. I'm just every dime you make is goes under you. Yeah. No. General liability. Yeah. So they, um, <laughs> so they, so, so in the beginning, you like, said, well, no, I, I know I'm going to probably do, but then it gives you a bunch of free to do this number. I'm going to only tell them this much, and then it won't cost me that. But then when you are, you know, it's not going to be like another bill, 25,000, and you get another bill, 16,000. Before you know it, you're back up to 25 cents on the dollar. <laughs> Yeah. And, uh, and of course, I have to have comp policies in all the different states. So everybody's got their own little gig. Right. Do you have some help in the end of that? Or do you think it does that for you? Yeah, I have a couple of um, different states. Why don't you just separate them? Just want to do it. See if there's anything in it. So, uh, no, um, session left on just I would just log on to your account and see if there's something there. But we keep everything short, so but the reading for me is a child like five thousand dollars a year just by one track. Like having a teenager, yeah. So you get a couple trucks, that's why I rent one of the trucks because I own two, but I Rent the rest because, yeah, yeah. If you had 10 trucks, it could be a hundred thousand dollars just to put them on the road. I'll tell you, say next side. But I ordered a new truck in 19 in 20, uh, 20, beginning of 2022. I ordered a brand new truck. Oh, here it says, yeah, the big white one, big white. yeah. So, well, actually, it's white box truck, box truck. Yeah, I've seen that one. Yeah, it's a it's a ten four fifty. Yep. I ordered another one. So you think I paid back up and then we can't keep your money though. Yeah, we haven't started building your truck yet. It's been a year now, over a year, a year and a half almost. And they're like, uh, and I talked to myself, the sales. I said, look, we keep saying you haven't, you know. He said, "Yeah, I know." I said, "He said, I, I just so you know, I put an order in for you, about twenty-four." Oh, that but service that I don't think they're ever going to end up canceling that order. I mean, but I wanted to get a twenty-four order, and he had a tax over. Well, that'd be good. <laughs> well, what are we getting? We could close and close up fourteen. Oh, I did um, <clears throat> the truck I got. It's a two thousand eight of that one nine. And of course, it was always the new truck. <laughs> and then one day I'm like, wait a minute, this is 15 years old. Yeah, it's got uh, 80,000 miles. That's not bad. No, you don't go that far. Not bad at all. 5,000 miles a year. Probably. Yeah. But I mean, I'm like, wait a minute, this isn't a new truck anymore. <laughs> it's 15 years old. Let's see if you jump in. Well, we get in 15. Yeah. So. All right. It being 8.15, um, we will open the continued public hearing for 17 Anthony Road and 346 R. Hale Street. Um, they have requested a continuance, and so um, we have a motion for that. Um, no. Do we do, do um, no, we're just going to, we'll just do the continuance, right? I was planning on giving a quick update, but okay. I think because um, we don't have all the members tonight, yeah. we risk losing um, Mr. Farrell for purposes of voting yeah. if we give a presentation. So um, because we're not all in attendance, I think it's better if I mean, not give no, okay, but nothing. Wait. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll wait until we get it. We get it. It's just yeah. not just just not right to, you know. We need everybody to be on board so that they know what's going on. So I agree. So we'll just do the uh, continuance, and then at the next meeting we'll try to get everybody there and get it to work. So, okay, Dave, if you would please. Okay, yep. um, uh, can I just I put eight thirty. I don't know if you want to do eight fifteen again. It's like a half hour only because sixty six Market Street is at eight, so it's up to you. You might change the time. So continue about eight fifteen on that. Oh, it does. 
Oh, okay. for the, no, for the next for one, the next for the one. motion. Oh, you want yeah. me to put it at 815? 15 is better that way. We won't have to wait so long if nobody, if, if, if there is another. Yep. Yeah, okay, noted. Okay, Mr. Okay. Chairman, I move that the Community Planning Commission vote to continue the public hearing for 17 Anthony Road and 346R Haverhill Street until September 5th, 2023 at 8.15. Seconded. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. I'll do roll call vote. Uh, Jeremiah? Aye. And myself, aye, and Dave? Aye. And so let the record show three in favor, no opposed, and they're continued until September 5th. And thank you all for those who are listening. Um, um, we're doing the best we can to get this, get this thing all put together and get them to show up. But uh, currently there are issues that they're still dealing with. And there'll be an update on September 5th, one way or the other. So thank you very much. Hey. Good. That's all right. Uh, well, uh, did you want to talk about the town meeting warrants or anything? I always put it back on there in case we wanted to discuss anything further, but I think we had decided at the last meeting that um, due to the timing of you know, discussions with the community that it didn't make sense to try to go for the October town meeting for MBTA communities, but it was due to June. Right, right. And also that I would be submitting a warrant article for um, 7 St. Teresa Street uh, for the um, affordable housing overlay district for, uh, you know, to give the time. For, for? Uh, for the affordable housing overlay district, um, 7 St. Teresa's to give oh, okay, right, right, okay. the town owner right to dispose of the property. So really, okay, all right. Um, and then as far as other things, ADU were not... Uh, doing and then there was one other thing that we had been discussed discussing but um oh no we are doing it it's the street acceptance freedom circle right okay that's all okay um i guess that's all we got then uh, so we go. i imagine we can uh, adjourn see you on the video thank you ryan <clears throat> i mean jeremiah jeremiah see you <laughs> no problem <laughs> yeah have a great night, everybody. Thank you, Nate. So, yeah.